I ended up having to leave my airplane here last night because there's no way I can land at my strip in the dark. So, had to drive home. I would have flown to Woodland, but I couldn't get any, a hold of anybody to pick me up. So, I'm back down here this morning, Sunday morning. I've got my gear loaded up, and I may go hit a few gravel bars on the Willamette before I head home. When I posted this video, I had a few comments about poor judgment here, flying in low visibility or even breaking FARs. This is class G airspace. So I was breaking no FARs here. Um, I also had people say, well, I'm setting a bad example. Well, you know, everybody's got to choose their own personal minimums. So this for me is within my wheelhouse. I wasn't breaking any laws. I wasn't setting a bad example. Everybody's got to make their own decisions. I'm not making decisions for people. I got just a little bit too slow right there and started to penetrate, so I added a little bit of power. It hasn't been too long ago that a local pilot in our area hit a kayaker on takeoff from one of these gravel bars not being able to see him, uh, probably because he was flying the back seat of a J3. But it's a good reminder to always clear the area before you put the power to it. If you can't take off and see where you're going, you know, you need to really make sure that nothing's in front of you. headed towards home. I knew the visibilities were a little better that direction and I ended up on one of the streams I like to play on. I've landed this little gravel bar many times. It changes as the river goes up and down. This gravel bar was actually shorter than I had realized when I was coming into it. Uh, I probably should have looked at it a little bit better. With the fuel and the gear I had on board, it was a maximum performance takeoff and I was using a little bit of water getting off of it. As you can see here, my runway's gotten a little bit longer, makes it a little bit less intimidating. I have an extra 100 plus feet 